Just a couple hours from now, we're going to get the latest reading on the nation's GDP. Economists expect that the um, economy uh, grew by 2 percent in the fourth quarter. That uh, is sharply slower than the nearly 5 percent growth rate in the third quarter. For more on what the data uh, could mean for the markets, the Fed's uh, next move, let's bring in Veronica Clark, economist at Citigroup, Peter Bookvar, chief uh, investment officer at Bleakley Advisory Group, as well as a CNBC contributor. And um, I'm just going to start, uh, Veronica, with, with, with Peter, because he's all confused. And, and you're going to have to, and then I'm going to go to you, and you're going to have to explain everything to him and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully help him out. Right? Peter, you, you have never been this, uh, um, th there's so many cross currents, you don't know whether you're coming or going at this point with the economy? Well, let's slice and dice it. You have the high end consumer continuing to spend robustly on travel leisure, hospitality, uh, but you have lower middle income consumers that are really continuing to prioritize their spend. Uh, a company called Monroe, which changes your tires, talked about how consumers, instead of going in and getting four new tires, they're buying one or two. And instead of buying the top tier tire, they're buying a lower tier tire to try to save some money. You have uh, the manufacturing sector in a recession, which it is globally as consumers have shifted their spend to more services and we're continuously seeing this destocking. You have the existing home market that's the slowest since the mid-90s, but you have the new build market that's doing okay. And then you have this massive amount of government spending that's helping to goose uh, the economy. And I think overall, uh, the picture is very mixed. And I still worry that the lag effect of higher interest rates will continuously flow through the economy both this year and next year, keeping a lid on growth. Hmm. Veronica, it all adds up, in your view, to something, I, I, I don't know if I'd call it uh, friendly, but it, it doesn't seem that threatening. If we get a 2 percent GDP and somewhere around uh, 2 percent PCE, that just sort of looks like a soft landing. What, what, what's the big deal? Yeah, yeah, this does look like a pretty perfect 2% quarter. Um, but I do agree that you know, the, the picture is mixed, especially when we look into the, the details of some of the labor market data that we've got. And, you know, we definitely did see the slowing in the labor market towards the end of last year. You know, layoff rates are still very low, um, but hiring rates have dropped to 2014 levels. You know, it's taking people longer to find a job. Um, we have seen consumer delinquencies rising, all of those signs that you know, do point to things slowing down, um, and that very well might continue, you know, that lagged effect of, of policy, you know, higher rates weighing on activity. Um, I think the big question now, though, is we have had this big loosening of financial conditions in the last couple months. Is that enough to, to really, you know, delay that recession for 2024? And that equates to how many rate cuts? Or, or uh, I like, I mean, I mean, you'd be crazy to tell me when and how many, but, but let's be <laughs> Yeah, that is our job, though, right? We have to we have to put some timeline to this and some numbers to this. Um, we're expecting the first cut in in June. That's 125 total if they go every meeting then. Um, so that that is the base case. Um, and part of that it could be that by June we are seeing this this weaker activity. Um, but I think the Fed has has pretty much told us that they are on the path to to cutting rates. And yeah, the issue is just the timing of that. Peter, is that the jibe with your thinking? Uh, yes, but the, the Fed's job is really complicated here because we're going to see continuous slowdown in service price inflation this year as slower rental growth works its way through the calculation. But we are possibly going to see an uptick in goods prices after them, uh, after prices have come down pretty sharply here. I, I think that, that Jay Powell's worst nightmare is seeing inflation flare up again. And if they do cut as aggressively as the bond market is pricing in, that's because we have a four and a half, five percent unemployment rate and a recession on our hands. If they cut a few times, two or three times, yes, that's nice. But we're still talking about a four and a half, four and three quarters Fed funds rate, which is still a far cry from zero. And we're still probably better off than uh, than the rest of the world. Peter, we can't count on Europe, probably can't count on China. I mean, the European economy at best is seeing no growth. You look at Germany, you look at the UK, you look at France. China is obviously having its challenges. But complicating the story is other emerging markets are doing really well. If you look at Southeast Asia, if you look at Brazil, uh, you look at Chile, you look at Peru, you look at other parts of, uh, of Asia, 
It's, it's very interesting that we had the most aggressive monetary tightening in 40 years, and the emerging markets actually did not blow up. I'm not, I can't remember the last time that happened, which tells me that they're on much better stead. So it's a very mixed bag global economy in addition to a U.S. economy. Uh, Veronica, at this point, I mean, when you go from 4.9 to 2, if, if that happened again, we'd go from 2 to minus 2. That, that's not, we're just going to stabilize here. Do you think it, maybe we go into the ones or below one, but, but no negative? Prince I don't. Year. I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't count on that yet. I mean, we we have seen that that slowing in the labor market data the last you know three six months or so. Um, the big question now is you know in Q1 you know as we're getting into the spring, um, are lower rates that we've had in the last couple months enough to re-stimulate activity, um, prevent further slowing? Um, and it, it, it very well may be. You know, we've already seen you know housing activity picking up again. You know, mortgage applications that are rising. Um, so we're really watching the the first couple months of of this you know year to to know if we're going to slow further or not. But we, we very well may still.